Stop the tuning into your stuff. Just gently raising the crown, putting the finger to the down chin. And the knees are soft. But your legs are strong. Take a bit of time to tune into how we could be. Strong legs and soft knees. And how is it possible to have a relaxed back with firm uprightness? And we're breathing with attention to these details, as well as the details of our breath, which is through the nostrils. The mouth is closed, but it's not clenched. You can also stretch the fingers. So everything about what you're doing is not normal. It's not unnatural. You're naturally going to greater uprightness, more balance. And also check that your arches of your feet are not collapsing. So you let the arches be stronger and higher, just like you're more tall. Just like you're more at ease. And everything's starting to look a bit like an arrow. Something about to take off, spring into action. Deeper breath, big exhale. Feel this objective practice. You like an object practicing. Deeper in breath, hold the in breath, raise the prana. You also feel our metabolic. Consciousness or metabolic intelligence starts to wake up when you practice like this. You become more conscious, in other words. Big in, and those are the And then everything soft to the hands, the shoulders, the arms. So we didn't spring into action, the edge is becoming more relaxed. Place the feet a bit wider and rolling over the sides of the feet. Knees bending, rolling the, uh, the feet over their edges, out step and in step. Breathing with a large sigh, like ah. Relax the neck and shoulders, we the whole time, adjusting ourselves to a greater functionality of some sort. Check it out, move the shoulders, move the body. Large action, big movement with the shoulders, change the direction. And then one arm and shoulder, one arm and shoulder. And the swimming action, and then smaller movement, but easy going. You're also anchoring the feet, so your arch is again strong, and the thighs relaxed but strong, the knees are slightly bending. You're in an ideal position to comfortably move. Change the direction, bigger, stretch massage like between the shoulder blades, shake the arms free, shake one leg up, other leg, and then placing one hand knuckles between the shoulder blades, high up as you can with comfort, feet together, arm up next to the head. You're staring out through the windows to outside somewhere, crown up, back of the neck line, you fix your gaze, so maybe you see car move, or see deep in-breath, big exhale, closing your eyes, your attention is on the hand between the shoulder blades, your attention simultaneously, same attention in two places, at the top hand, third place, two feet, fourth place, the lungs in front of the hand between the shoulder blades, you become aware of the heart, cardiovascular motions, Pumps the blood into your hands, up from the feet, back to the heart, breathing out breath. Bring the top hand down, change the other arm, 
become physiologically aware, and conscious at the same time. As a human being, you can think about abstract things like your name, where you come from. You're also aware of the heart, the lungs, the position, the breath, two feet, the balance. And reducing back to just the hand between the shoulder blades awareness. Bring the top hand on, both arms and the thighs, hands with the eyes closed. Think about the picture that you saw, streets, road with cars in, ocean somewhere far in the background, a bit further back. And about 100 odd meters, but really far vision wise. Staying exactly like that, think of the ocean, 100 meters far. And to the end of the bay, a few kilometers, and thousands of kilometers until we get somewhere like a park in Australia or somewhere. Take a large exhale, bend the knees, open the eyes, hands at the front, arms up easily, and bouncing to loosen the thighs, hips, lower back. A small loosening, bouncing movements. One hip up, other hip up. Big exhale, relax your shoulders. And the feet wider than the mat, so we can have a table pose, flat back, arms forward. <coughs> Big exhale, your back more flat, chin tucked in. Body is parallel to the ground. Then you work a little harder to stretch more of the hamstrings. You stretch more at the shoulders, elbow, deep in breath, more flat back, getting the legs blurred more, here, like that. Yeah. Now you can also see your arches, slightly raised, so the ankles don't collapse, so you can walk into the big toe, your ankles are stronger like that. Cowboy legs, like that, knees out, hang upside down, <sighs> let the body relax by loosening, by shaking it out a little bit, <laughs> hands to the knees, you're looking up, and you're aware of the spot between the shoulder blades where your hands were, one at a time earlier. Feel that spot when you move the shoulders one back and the other one back. You're actually massaging the areas next to the spine. <sighs> then you massage the abdominal area by doing abdominal lift on the exhale. So you breathe out, chin tucked in, belly to the spine, and you've got a round back, chin tucked in. You hold the out breath, and you hold your attention in the abdominal region. You roll up the rest of the way on the inhale, standing upright. <coughs> the feet comes together, hands are wide, arms to the back, and the crown up. And you're closing your eyes and you're becoming aware of how the whole body is loosened by yoga practices. You're becoming aware of the crown chakra, and the feet on the floors, and the whole body becoming conscious of itself. In the world, that's where we are in the world. In the body, take the largest breath, bring the hands up on the legs, inhale, so picking up time to tune in to the movement, to the breath. Your hands are together above you. When you bend the arms, the elbows can go back further. When you straighten the arms, it's a harder stretch to keep the arms back. Big exhale. Where you can lift one arm, other arm, you're aware of the two arches <coughs> and the big toes. When you close your eyes, you're aware of how you're projecting up into the fingertips, but it's starting at the feet on the floor. Deep in, big exhale. Bring your hands to prayer in front of the chest with the eyes closed. Large side breath. So bring ourselves consciously to consciousness. <coughs> so we're just saying here, yeah, we are here. We're 
to see you know, because we somehow moved spiritually to take up practices such as yoga, physical practice, also spiritual practice. We are observing ourselves, it's also a spiritual observance. Habit, technique, ritual, and so on. Big sigh. Feet a little wide, thumb to index finger. Next to the sides, and you go like this. Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. In this line. Crown up, chin back in. Big exhale. Doing this, the shoulders can relax, we can make it more exaggerated. We can make it a bit more subtle. Bounce harder, and go faster, slower, just the way we went. Big exhale, we're going to carry on though for a while. Breathe slow, large breath. Sometimes you can breathe a small breath, or you can breathe rhythmically up and down. Stay with the thumb to index finger mudra. Go for a little while, keep going. Big exhale. Back in the leg arm. Feel it's a fun thing to do. Don't know why, but it is. Big exhale. Smooth, long breath, but keep rhythmically the movement. Rhythm is fun, I guess. It's my house cleaner. Then you hang forward, double bend, big side of the bar. And stay upside down and relax. Behind the ankles to pull into a double bend. Stretching hamstrings. And then uh, hands flat on the lower back. To table practice, but with the arms on the flat back. So you're holding the body stable, parallel with the ground, so blood pressure. Equally distributed among the crown to the hips, and also you're not suddenly coming up. So when you do come up now on the inhale, keep the hands at the same place. You can rock the shoulders one at a time to the back and feel the movement in the lower back muscles. And raise the chin up a little bit more, shoulders to the back and face up in a big in, big side breath. <sighs> keep your one hand on the lower back and the right hand goes to the other side. With a small structure and making structural improvements with each new posture. Take the hand down, change to the other side. Deep in breath, big exhale, in and out the nostrils. And then feet wide as the mat and the hands horizontal. Also, a structure this time, quite a big structure. The hands out, five point star, crown up, chin tucked in. Feet wide as your mat is. You're stable, but you're not locking the knees, unlock the knees. Stretch into the arms, but you're not locking the elbows either. Shoulders are unlocked. Closing your eyes, you unlock your potential by not bracing. That's why the fun movement was fun because you're unlocking tension. But the movement is so much fun, but the result, the feeling of being loosened. So likewise, this is so much fun when it becomes a challenge, but a challenge in its own way to rise and meet it. Leaves us with a sense of satisfaction. Deepest breath through the nose. Big sigh with the mouth. Keep the arms there, bring the feet together. 
keep that side arm and you catch the other foot. Hold the foot in, he's in front of the knee, uh, the hip, hip, and the knee hangs down. Big exhale. And then you can bring the arm up next to the head where it's much more easy to hold. Now the shoulders in position. Just under the arm so that you can stay upright. And the arch in a position it supports the body. This is why you want the arch. Collapsed arch and you can't do this. Concentrating on the arch, bring the hand down, release the foot, both arms the same, deep breath, big exhale, bend the knee, catch hold of the foot, and then take the arm up next to the head, let the knee hang down, focus on the arch, the foot that you on arch, crown up, chin tucked in, use the wall. Shoulder here. Oh, you can hook in the door as well. <laughs> there you go. Knee hangs down, hand is up. Think of the cardiovascular system and your arch. Your arch is like a springboard. Big in, big side, back of the neck long. Bring the arm down. Release the foot, shoulders, and we're coming to a uh, small finger to thumb, arms above the head, feet a little wide, and we're going again, exhale. So we're stimulating energy to flow everywhere inside us. Keep going. Go for a little while, a minute or so, to be quite active. We're in each bounce, each breath. Not pounding on your knees, but definitely working them and getting exercise with thighs. Last few. Bring your arms down next to you. Shake the hands free. Now we bring the feet together with the palms next to us. Eyes are open. Big in, big exhale. Back of the neck longer. With your gaze mentally fixed, you can close your eyes. Feel the heat developing in your feet. It's the heat of warm blood circulating. Big in, big exhale. circulating as the body shuts down hardens and becomes stiff big sigh with the mouth becomes impure as well so you detoxify with the breath bring hands to prayer front of the chest you feel that we're not making a sound we make the arm sound we are making a sound Feel no sound and then inhale and then make an arm sound together. Big in, big side. Relax your shoulders, adjust the body so you can make the best. Om sound with the body. Breathe in. <laughs> Big sigh. And a third one, deep in breath. Oh. 
stay with the core muscles contracting, back of the neck long, then take a normal breath, big and big arms. Arms next to you, and then lift one shoulder up, other shoulder, and then moving up and down, just slow and easy. Moving mostly the shoulders, and the whole body becomes rubber man, rubber girl. Big exhale, rubber person. Shake it loose. Super possible. Rubber power. Hanging upside down, shake the head, neck, and shoulders. <coughs> Big side breath. <coughs> and hands to the knees. So you're resting in resting position, knees bent, weight on the arms, on the knees, so the back is free. You can look up a little bit. Big in, big exhale, the arms a little bit uh, straighter, so you can be a bit more up. Yeah, shoulders slightly higher than the hips. Big side. Feel the structure, the body, the arches. The abdomen also becomes an arch when you exhale, or the abdominal lift. Exhale, abdominal lift. Chin tucked in, lower back lengthens, the tailbone becomes free. Then you take an inhale, big sigh. Coming up. And feel when you do this action, with the ribs pressing down. And you do abdominal lift. That's an internal organ version of a massage. So we we'll go more free. Energy flows. Again, strange fun, but it is. Seems strange it is. And then shake the arms. We're going to do abdominal lift. Large in breath. Big exhale, belly to spine, so it takes a lot of action to get going. Else we just stay lethargically in the same place. Belly to spine. Inhale up. Big exhale. Standing upright and you can rub up and down gently the midriff. Lower lungs, abdomen deep in breath, big exhale. Shoulders to the back. Get a bit of a back bend, chin is raised. Keep the hands there, then stand with the feet together, and the back of the neck longer, and your head tilting forward releases tension from the back of the neck. The tension is at the second chakra, just above the uh, hips. With your eyes closed, feel the pelvic bones under your outside of the hands where the small finger is. When you point the thumbs up, you can stick them under the, the ribs and actually feel the lungs if you press hard enough. And then breathe, feeling the midriff. Crown up, back of the neck long. Both arms up next to the head. Lift the face to the sky. And mentally lift your mind to the heavens, which is the other side of the sky. Standing with the two feet on the ground, deep breath, big exhale, arms to shoulder height, horizontal, back of the neck long, feet wide as your mat is, and that side, the hand goes higher, and the other one lower with your head to the side. Chin tucked in, and you've got a deep breath, shoulders back, much more energy flowing everywhere, inside you, into you, and we'll stay here for about a minute. Keep breathing and keep the core muscles very intact. So the tension on the two arches and the core muscles. That's the basis of your structure. Deep in, big exhale through the nose. Change the others. Feel the solid, wide base of your feet with the arches. And the ribs open. Midriff open. Requiring a bit of focus and willpower. 
Keep breathing, core muscles. Keep breathing, back of the leg, right chin tucked in. Maybe a large in, big extra, big, big sigh. Stay there. Deep breath. And leveling out. Bring the arms down, relax your shoulders. Let the arms rest, feet are wide as the mat still. Arms are relaxed. Loosen the shoulders. Coming warm and stuck. Grounded, so strong, but relaxed in our body. The tailbone is completely free. You want to take your hand and you rub the, the tailbone area between the buttocks, lower back, and the coccyx or long cranial area there, deep in breath, the bottom end of the cranial sacral system. You can feel deep in breath, big exhale, how that area needs to be unstuck for the spine to be healthy and loose and free. Big out breath. Feet together. We're making a fist with the other hand on top of the fist. We're going to stick the fist onto the stomach. And with the eyes closed, keep breathing a powerful breath so that you're making it harder to breathe by pushing. Pulling the fist, which is over the stomach. The fist is almost the same size as the stomach. It's also the center of the third chakra. And you're looking for a sensitive area with the thumb to push into the fists. And the third chakra sits on top of the second one, which sits on top of the first one. You're aware of the arches, back of the neck. So you're working with that aspect of being, chakra, awareness, crown up, shoulders down, big exhale, <clears throat> relax from the palm up to the side, gently stretching, breathing through both nostrils, big exhale through the nose, do the same with the other hand closer, so you're just switching hands, fists, Bend your fist so the thumb hits the middle of the chakra, the middle of the stomach, and the thumb would be the center of the stomach and the center of the third chakra, other hand pressing into you, and you're breathing powerfully through the nose, the midriff, feeling the benefits, pressing against something, gives it a kind of a tension with the resistance, strengthens the arms, Back of the neck, long corner. We are working with consciousness, so we strengthening our conscious awareness. Bring on free next to us, eyes closed. Right side of the mouth, under the jaw. Softly close mouth, tip of the tongue down the front teeth. Conscious of breath through the nose, not the mouth. It's the breath come into contact with the brain directly. The third eye, forehead. So you're aware of the, the third eye as a consciousness place, brain consciousness. Body consciousness, breath, earth, standing on the ground, in the sky, in the heavens, conscious being. Deep in the side of the mouth. Hands to the thighs, breathing out the cares of the world, so to feel those cares. Conscious of human beings, breathing through the nose. With the 
nice open. We'll cross the feet quite a bit. Bend the knees so we can sit down. Palms open. Big sigh with a mouth. Back of the neck long, crown up, chin tucked in. And you're super aware of the mobility that you have. And yet we're sitting dead still in our own center. We're super aware of our own. Self-awareness. We're also super aware of being in the world. But we're pushing the world to the back of our minds by being in this centeredness of conscious awareness. that it's a real or actual frequency of consciousness. side of the knee and the arms gently, levers, crown up, shoulders down, deep in, big smooth out, and you fix your gaze in one spot, mentally keep the gaze but close your eyes, you're aware of the whole spine, tip of the tongue behind the front teeth, and that connects the third eye chakra to the front aspects of your chakras which are on the spine as well. Turning forward, rock left, right, hips up, down, exhale. Change to twist other direction, crown up, shoulders down, chin tucked in. Fix your gaze, mentally close your eyes, fixing the gaze. Be aware of the spine, the chakras, tips of Tip of the tongue behind the front teeth, which connects the third eye and the back of the spine, chakra system to the midline, to the tip of the teeth, uh, tip of the tongue, teeth, I mean, deep breath, big exhale. And turn forward, and you have your feet to butterfly. Big exhale, hands where it's comfortable, at the shins, the spine where it's comfortable. So with the shoulders relaxed and the crown up, your head can tilt forward and you can become aware of the vertebra of the back, the spine, and you're stacking them one on top of the other. Like when we use those flat rocks, we take one rock, put it on the other. So that you form a little row, upright standing, vertical, line of balancing rocks to balance. And it's the actual stacking. Many things are just lying around and scattered. Flat rocks on the beach or somewhere where you find them. We'll make a little stone sculpture, making art with nature. Land art. Use your spine like that. Make an arrangement, in other words, with the rocks, with your vertebra. Also, it's all into chaos, disrepair. It's conscious interacting with the body. 
deepest breath, you use your muscles to support the spine. You relax the neck so that you don't become stiff or tight, so that you're at ease. You're breathing through the nose. Big sigh of the mouth. <sighs> relax the jaw. And you relax the head, neck, and shoulders more. Big exhale again through the nose. And the hands moving up towards the knees, where the shins begin, and you lean to the back. Now you have to press the knees and oh, sorry, the feet a little bit more together. You're hanging back from the knees. So if you bring the chin down, you can feel your spine sinking at the front and round and bulging to the back. And if you rock left and right, it helps to loosen the hips, lower back, and shoulders. And there we had your stomach and hands and fists. That's the small area now. It's almost like you have your fist there. Coming up on the inhale, you open up this area and you push your shoulders to the back. Stay like that. Also rocking left and right. That opens the throat chakra, and midriff, as well as the heart. And your face is forward, but you're not hurting the neck vertebra. Into the back, chin, exhale, tucked in. So moving, inhale, exhale, in breath, and exhale. So we're moving slow, with care. But along this particular structure, in breath, and exhale structure. So that we're moving in such a way that the muscles supporting the spine is benefited. And so that spine benefits and breath benefits. Organs of the body, front and back benefit. System benefits. Keep going faster if you want. More active, proactive. Move a lot. Exercise in this sense is fun. Energy, pleasure of movement. Last few. Chin tuck, chin up and exhale. And then long legs to the front, hands to the back. Hands fairly close to the back together. Pointing the toes down, shoulders back. You fixing your gaze at the toes. And see the ankles, look at the ankles, and there we're opening, we're creating an opening over the tops of your feet, toes are pointed down. You start to feel the arches when you press the toes down more. The back of the neck long, so you are making the same action with the back of the neck, the head hang down. So you're creating an open flow up and down the spine, the back of the neck, the shoulders are to the back. Breathe in, breathe out. Feet goes to neutral. And you feel when you sit upright, the shoulders are to neutral. All the areas of possible blockages or less flow, like the bends at your feet, ankles, and so on. We want to loosen. Deep in breath, big exhale. And then we cross the leg. So it's like quite a difficult thing. It was hard for me in the beginning teaching yoga because I healed myself of arthritis doing yoga. And then, uh, so I learned from therapy how to do that. And then I learned from yoga how to do it. And then I see people the whole time with arthritis. And I'm thinking, like, man, it's your own fault. Stop complaining. Because it's like, do something about it, you know, because you can. You know, but then you also realize you can't because you have a certain mental picture. That's why I had arthritis, because I got it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, so I got it. And so, you know, and I said, I, I thought it couldn't change. And then something said to me, no, but it doesn't have to be like that. So everyone says, no, it can't change the medical condition. You're screwed. And I'm like, no, that doesn't work for me. 
you learn what to do, and then I got lucky and I could change it, but not everyone gets lucky. So it's a big picture, but the point of it really is that we can at least make the effort, but to make the effort requires effort as well. So that's again, ah, okay, so how do you change if you're stuck? <laughs> So breath is one thing, and then the small movement. So small things has a big effect. So if we can just realize that when we sit like this, and we make a small fist, most people can do that. So most people do that already the whole day long. Quiet desperation. So you take a large inhale, and you exhale, and you just accentuate a little bit more. So now it's still small, but it's actually quite big. And you release from there. Big exhale, now you lift the chin a little bit and you relax your shoulders and then you can feel it's actually an inspiring energy because now energy is flowing. So the breath is the main thing. So you take the arm up and you just lift the arm, you press down the other hand. Just holding the arm up there, take a large breath. Big sigh, relax the jaw. And then interestingly enough, we make the biggest difference with the smallest things. Take the hand down with the other arm up. Deep breath in, big exhale. And then bringing the hand down, placing the tip of the tongue behind the front teeth. You're sitting cross legs, but we could have been sitting in a chair. With the feet to the floor and the tip of the tongue behind the front teeth. And that connects the front of the body to the back. Because energetically, the tip of the tongue, the, uh, the top of the root palate, connects the energy flow inside the body. So that's just a small bit of information with the smallest action. So the smallest bit of information can make the biggest difference. Big in, big exhale. Uncross the legs to put the other way. And then unhook the jaw, open the mouth, and go like that. That's it. So one of the more weird yoga practices. You've got to you do that two or three times. Then you make it an accompanying sound. And the jaw is more relaxed. You put the tip of the tongue behind the front teeth. It's a small bit of information. Deep in breath, big exhale, a little bit of a weird action. And then energy starts to flow from the brain to the hips. Your hands are relaxed. You take a large breath, more energy flows in the body. And small little suggestions of arthritis starts to heal from the knuckles and fingers. You take a large in breath, big exhale. Big sigh. Legs go long to the front. Put the hand to the opposite outside foot. And you twist yourself as much as you can without hurting yourself. Of course, if your back hurts already, then don't be like mean to it. If your shoulders are hurting, don't be mean with it. Turn the head to the side, do less if something hurts. Trying to do nothing though. Embrace when it's pain, but relax. Change to the other side. Twisting, turning a little bit more, breathing. Then inhale to upright, and your foot there, and the other foot you pull in. Fingertip to over the foot if you can. Other hand in the lower back and let the head hang down and the top shoulder you push to the back. So you have a kind of an arch of the upper body with the shoulder back and the elbow bending a little bit and you're pulling the foot towards yourself. So you're using yourself to create a large uh, effect practice with the minimum of effort. Call it effortless effort. Take a large breath. Big exhale, relax everything, but stay in the posture. So we're learning to take it easy, but take it in the expression. Coming up on the in-breath, 
So we let our body be like that expression. Take it, take it easy. Hand to the lower back, middle back, shoulder back, head hangs down. Deep breath, easy exhale. Shoulder back, let the head hang free. Relax, pull at the foot and the hand. Deep in, deep breath. Head, neck and shoulders, heavy. Big exhale. So part of the heaviness is what keeps the release. Big out breath through the nose. Top shoulder moves more back. Sitting upright and bring this foot across so that it's across but to the front of the shin. Hands at the knees, you're steering the crown up with your eyes closed, feel that you're creating. A very beautiful structure, beautiful because when we stack those stones and then those smooth white river stones, we're starting it small and starting it big and ending it small at the top. We do it because it's beautiful, because we create that beautiful structure, and because it's something to do. Creativity. Big exhale, leaving no stone untouched best self practice. Stretching from there with the head down and the hands forward. Maybe get the forehead to the floor, maybe not. The point is to stretch forward, feeling the points of the stretch. And the stretch making a point to you. Coming up to the inhale, we put the other foot at the front. Other foot to you, <coughs> rocking the body so we can loosen the vertebra. Stretching down, exhale. If you get down, you do. If you don't, you don't. You're doing it. The stretch, the position, the practice is happening. <coughs> Big exhale. Coming up right on the in breath. Big exhale. You rock the body a few times and you can actually feel it loosening the body. And you massaging your organs, and we're making a twist. Elbows, and we go exhale, 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 exhale. And keep on moving, otherwise we get rusty. So we keep on keeping on, taking it easy, taking it. Pausing only to put the other foot at the front and then continue. So now we're starting to, we're beginning to understand our practice more and more. And sitting still. Legs to normal easy pose, easy cross leg position. With the palms open, when we connect the thumb to the index finger, and the other finger is curling up towards the index finger. So what we call a finger mudra in yoga. The back of the neck is long and the chin tucked in. And we just gently, ever so gently, pull up on the core muscles. So the core muscles start to become in our awareness, similar to the arches of our feet. Shoulders are relaxed because of all of this. And because they're relaxed, energy can flow between the fingertips and the thumbs to the shoulders, to the body. Tip of the tongue behind the front teeth. Deep in breath through the nose. You're creating a whole body mudra. Everything internally flowing and not leaving. Called inwardness or inwards withdrawal and the concentration of inwards. And it's actually the step preceding enlightenment. Deep in breath, big exhales. And you would retreat even further with even greater ease of concentration. Breath. 
Big exhale, release the finger locks or finger mover, sit a bit more upright. You can feel it's a different focus, different energy. Big sigh with the mouth. Latin made, made easy. Takes about one minute or something. <laughs> Take the arms to the back, shoulders to the back, shoulders to the back, leaves your chest more open when you move left and right with the shoulders. Big in, big out breath. Uncross the legs to make that small shift. So we can do the same with the feet the other way around so that all the body parts become part of the practice. Relax your shoulders. Okay, so if you put your foot like that and you roll the foot more to the side, to the outstep, you'll see that the arch rises. So when the natural position is about there, but when your foot collapses or the, or the ankle isn't strong, then it starts to create a whole lot of problems up to the knee. So that's a thing where we, when we have one foot that's collapsed inwards, then you can't do a foot balance, like a one leg balance or something. So that muscle has to be strong and it has to be part of the toe. So it has to look a bit like that. So that's just like a structural from the building from the ground up. So if you place your feet like that, they're supposedly symmetrical. And so the arches, it mustn't do this with your feet, in other words. So when you roll the arches like that, and you lift up like this, the lower back can relax. If you can go on the fingers, then great. If you can't, you can be on the hands. You could also be on the fists. So the idea is to have a strong structure so the tailbone can relax. Big in, big exhale. Then you loosen the white ball. <coughs> And shake the ants. So it's actually simple, simple stuff. Arms up next to the head. Deep in, big exhale. Eyes open or close as you like. Big sigh. We're sitting like this for a minute or two. And we're just letting gravity flow the blood away from the hand. Big exhale is also a Zen practice. Zen whatever that means to us. You can call it sitting still. What is that Zen art of one flower? One flower what? Zen art of flower arrangement. The body being like a flower in a single beautiful vase. Zen simplicity, elegance. Simple practice. Sound of one hand clapping, that's why it's in. Big in, big exhale. Sound of your breath. And then the sound of no sound. Consciousness into us, deep in, big exhale, and we overcome certain whatever we need to overcome, certain things shifting in our minds and bodies. So we bring the hands down, we carry on sitting, but not having to keep the arms up, it's a little easier. Shoulders are relaxed. Big exhale. We're sitting in stillness. Feel the joints. Somehow the body becomes dislodged of tensions. Big exhale. And from there, lie down to flat on the back in Savasana. Yoga relaxation. Which means you're lying down, but in consciousness, or you 
consciously lying down. Relax the shoulders. It's a whole thing, a whole area, muscles, bones inside, and the whole thing, a concept of just relaxing, going like in breath, exhale, now relax. That's my choice, that's what I'm doing. Big exhale, do the same with the legs. That's the structure. So you're lying in a structure, but a relaxed one, not using your arches, so why would you want to pull them up? Not using your muscles, so why would you hold them tight? Makes more sense to relax when you relax. So do exactly that, relax. And what is relaxed? You are relaxed. Big in, big exhale. Feel the stillness. The stillness is in you. It's yours then. So I have the great fortune of having a flat renovated next to me. So I have to keep in my zen so it doesn't agitate me. Take the largest breath in because oh, it's, it's up to me to make my weather. It's up to us to create our own weather, our own disposition. Choosing a relaxed body, a relaxed mind, taking it easy, but taking it that kind of thing. Big in, big exhale. Choosing our own body condition. Place the feet to the floor, knees bent. We carry on with the same relaxedness. Feet to the floor, knees bent, but the knees resting inwards. So we have a structure there that now acknowledges the arches, but your arches are still relaxed, but you're aware of the toes. And slightly strengthen the big toes towards the floor. Slightly. And then that awareness, we have a little bit of one small information that makes it possible together with the physical practice, together with awareness, to build ourselves from the ground up. Put the tongue behind the front teeth, and then we want energy in that structure. Breathe in the nose, out the nose. And the practice itself gives us the insight required to maintain the practice. Hug the head up to the knees. Squeeze the breath out, rock sideways or roll sideways, then rock forward and back to rock upright and inhale. And thank you. Thank you. Time flies when you have fun. Thank you. What did you call it? Any man. Any man. Rubber man. Rubber man. So you have the arthritis thing. Is it by bringing awareness to the place, like say you've got arthritis in your finger, is it by doing that and the breath, or does it, do you have to have awareness to it? Uh, there's so many pictures and layers to it, um, but the underlying initial thing is um, um, abdominal breathing, mm -hmm. and then um, relaxedness, and then the awareness of energy flowing through the relaxedness. So we're not doing the healing, the healing is done yeah. through the abdomen and the energy flow. Mm -hmm. And then the mental picture that goes with it is normally anxiety or contraction, um, which means the energy is not flowing in the first place. So when you relax the hand, but you have the underlying tension, then the hand's not going to. So you relax the the tension, yeah. then the abdominal action gets the energy to flow, and then the life force comes through, and then the arthritis doesn't have a chance because the life force flows. But as soon as the arthritis comes up, it's because the 
the life force doesn't have a chance to flow. It's a mental, emotional picture. It's very hidden though. And then a lot of the health aspects are so carefully hidden as well in diet as well as um, the way that we breathe. So I was lucky, I, I healed it in two years. Um, but it can take a lifetime. How old were you? 24. But it normally comes with a physical precondition. Yeah. So I was predisposed to it. Yeah. So I got it at a young age, starting in my 20s. Mm. And then the, the medical picture was you have a precondition, you are screwed. And that's where I was like, if you see Kate, is that because I don't want to be screwed in that way. Mm. And then, yeah, I followed, that's, that was my. One of my initial journeys into healing because my consciousness has said that is just simply not, I don't accept that that can't be true. Mm -hmm. It's just a logical thing, you know. So I didn't have arthritis when I did certain things. So I'm going like, hello, why are you telling me that can't I do certain things? And then they'll be cool. Mm -hmm. and the medical system says if we can't intervene physically, I mean, with, with giving you something, Externally, yeah. that means you, you can't change. I'm going like, that's where I started with my thing of like, so you guys have got, you can't give me the right medicine, so now I can't live. I'm going like that. So I went like on a rampage about this thing and started like swearing at everyone. Mm. So like, you guys aren't God. And it's like, I am God. No, that's sacrilegious. <laughs> so that brings up a whole lot of pictures of arthritis as well. Yeah. If that makes sense. So, yeah. that's, so you have to really look at the cousin like that. Because, you know, you can also be angry and get arthritis. Yes. Because of the anger. Yeah. So it's, yeah. that's why I'm saying it's a very complex picture, but it's yeah. actually very simple if that makes sense. As well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's great. I've got such an advantage. I don't know what I've done to it. Yeah, that's but the thing. That's what we do. Yeah. 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 All we have to know is that we can, we may be able to undo it. Yes. So it's just that yeah. opening, we may be able to. Yeah. And that yeah. just gets in the energy. And then yes, you just patiently yeah. do a little bit here and a little bit there. Yeah. So it's very easy to talk about it, but it's like a little bit harder to change the habits and the stuff. Yes, yeah. But yeah, um, I think we can, uh, it's always a whole mix of. It's always a whole mix of. Things. Yes. Yeah. I think some of these things stay with us forever. Yeah. But you know, I mean, the wisdom of it as well is mm. that's why I love this practice uh -huh. so much. Is because yeah, well, thank you. the wisdom of it is also that by strengthening. The weaker areas yes, yeah. It may be too late to fix the hip. Yeah, and I'm also an absolute ignored it. But, it yeah, but that's the it. thing to not do is to ignore it. Yeah, look for the areas attention. that you can pay attention yeah. to. Yeah. And then yeah, I'm going to have a contract, you know. But I must go actually for an extra thing just to see exactly yeah, if it's a structural you must. thing. And, and, and the yeah. nice thing yeah. about, about, the, uh, about the, the, one, the one thing that the, one of the, major things that the doctors can do is the surgeries of medicine. Yeah, yeah. Um, so hip replacements are one of the successful, successful yeah. practices. Yeah. And if you're going to have a hip so replacement, then go for it. So I need to find out what it is in the first yeah. place. Yeah. 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 You know, but uh, a lot of the stuff you can fix through physio. Yes, yeah. And by physio, I mean also this kind of yoga. That's yeah. right, yeah. And I just, I've, bro I've broken this foot and this one works. Sure. Various things. Yeah. So that's good. And I've done it. I mean, I've healed it, but I realized I haven't actually been working on this one as much. So it's much kind of lapsed working on everyone else's physicalities. Yeah, because that's a beauty. Mm -hmm. I also noticed today, um, I, you know, that I actually my arches are collapsed in. Well, and collapse. I'm sure that could even. Yeah, the collapsed arch is yeah. Yeah. up to the hip. Yeah. Sorry, that's what's really So the collapsed arch is the problem, but um, then yeah. you need core strength to support the arch. Yes, yeah. So that's why, you know, when core practices and the yeah, just came up in such a big way, yeah. you were very right in that. Yeah. Um, so that's a core strength, which is sitting in the second chakra. Yeah. So your, your um, hip would always be in that. Yeah. Um, so that's a core strength, which is sitting in the second chakra. Yeah. So it's all, your your um, hip would, would almost invariably be a second chakra problem. Uh, yeah. So that's yeah. why I'm saying because we 
complex. It remains simple as the second chakra. Yes. But the emotional com complexity of the second chakra is such that you know you can spend like a long time trying to know what the hell is going on yes. in your life. Yeah. yeah. That causes my new problem. Mm. But it's always structural. And the second chakra is also structural. Yeah. What is the second chakra? Well, it, it's different for each person. Oh, right? so okay. Um, it's it's continuous core strength is really important. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. So it's also creative. It's only cliches. It's creativity, sexuality, yes, yeah. stuff like that. But the weird thing about it is, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like it becomes very um, vague because what sexuality? We don't even know what to do. So if we're not clear on it, it can give us an issue. Yes. We're like, no, I'm not great sex, so what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, that's not what I mean. No? Yeah. Or, and yeah. maybe that's exactly what we mean. Yes, yeah. It's different for each person. Yeah. Um, so it's structural, so we also need to go like, okay, what's my structure? And then also, how does my food support my structure? How does my breathing? So it comes back down to breathing. Breathing. So that's a simple part. Okay. So you're yeah. like, ooh, I don't want to go that way, so I'm just going to breathe. Which works. Yeah. Some complex, why not just stand up right and breathe? That'll fix it. How many years were you fighting with it also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Johan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Johan. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. And now I go practice your own structural practices. What are you beginning? Or are you just leaving to see what comes up? No, 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 I'm continuing. I'm in private practice with Michael Ogie. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Fisher and I work with people, I do creativity with people who've had strokes mm -hmm. and oh, mindfulness and awareness and building trials and right. art and things like that. And then also work with children. So I, I want to do more of the gestalt work, which I can't really do with Michael Ogie. Because we have Virginia, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's the too polarity many. and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I want to be free. Cool. Yeah. Right. So, so yo, you I have started a thing. I have, I have started, yes. It's a bit dense, but it's, it is dense. But it's, uh, it's so um, true to our practice. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why, I mean, just, just 